Carousel of Life, Day 11, FaceTime. A miraculous ladybug fanfiction written for Adrianette April 2019, following the daily prompt posted on Tumblr. Check the description box for more information as well as links to the previous chapters. If you're new to this story and want to listen from chapter 1, click the card in the upper right corner for the playlist. Enjoy the ride on the Carousel of Life! For once, Marinette was early to class, but Adrian wasn't there yet. Ten minutes after class began, she started getting worried, especially since today was a very important day. Marinette tapped Nino's shoulder. When he turned around, she gestured at the empty seat beside him. Where's Adrian? She mouthed. Silently, Nino slipped his phone out of his pocket, tapped the screen a few times, and covertly handed it back to Marinette through Alia. On the screen was a text from Adrian sent at 3.37 a.m. that day. Hey Nino, I hope this doesn't wake you up, but I'm at the airport. I'm going to Japan. I just found out about it a couple hours ago when my father woke me up and told me to pack. Can you take notes for me and pick up my homework? I'll be back on Saturday. Marinette did a double take and read the message again. Japan? He didn't say anything else? She whispered at Nino. Miss Bustier gave her a sharp look but didn't say anything. Nino shook his head. Marinette handed the phone back dejectedly. Disappointment sat heavy on her chest. She thought about the two wrapped gifts tucked in her bag. She wouldn't be able to give him either of them or even wish him a happy birthday. She could text him at least. But what if he didn't have cell service overseas? Marinette hid her phone behind the desk, balanced on her thigh, and unlocked it. Maybe he had Lime. It was a data messaging app she only used for the group chat with her family in China. Most of the conversation was in Chinese, so she usually just ignored the messages. She opened the app and scrolled through her contact list to check for Adrian. Lo and behold, there he was. His profile picture looked cute. She squinted at the thumbnail, wishing she could see it better, before opening a new message to him. Wish I could say this to you in person, but happy birthday! She added a bunch of celebration emojis, including some hearts, then deleted the hearts before sending the message. As an afterthought, she opened her GIF keyboard and browsed for a cute happy birthday cat GIF. Her chest thrummed as she pressed send. He wouldn't get the messages for a while anyway if he'd left that morning. He was probably still in transit. Marinette slipped the phone into her bag and tried to pay attention to class. After staying up until 1am finishing homework, Marinette finally climbed in bed and checked her phone for what felt like the hundredth time that day to see if Adrian had responded to her messages yet. Nothing. Feeling antsy, she opened Instagram to do some browsing before sleep and promptly froze when she saw the top photo in her feed. It was posted on Adrian's account at around 5pm, midnight in Japan time, a selfie of him pulling a small rolling suitcase through a pristine airport hallway. He was grinning broadly but his hair was a bit mussed and his eyes looked tired. The caption read, Just landed in Japan. It's my first time. So excited. I'm only in Shinjuku for a day, but send me food wrecks in the comments. What had gripped Marinette's heart was what, or rather, who, she saw in the background of the picture. It was Kagami, primly holding the arm of her mother who seemed to be in mid-conversation with Miss Churgrest. Marinette knew she shouldn't jump to conclusions or make anything of it. She was well aware that Miss Churgrest was engaged in business with Miss Tsurugi, but the thought that Adrian was with Kagami in Japan on his birthday combined with the fact that he still hadn't replied to Marinette's messages despite having been on social media, and that he'd had to go away the very day she'd finally seriously decided to confess to him was all too much for her at that moment. Imagining him on a 13-hour flight bumping elbows with Kagami was the last straw. Pushing her phone away, she curled up under the covers and cried. As if sensing her mood, Tiki, who had been dozing in the alcove above Marinette's bed, awoke and came to float by Marinette's cheek. Marinette! Marinette! What happened? She cooed. Nothing, Marinette mumbled, curling tighter. Something about Adrian? Tiki asked, knowing her too well. He's in Japan with Kagami, 
There's no reason to be upset about that, Marinette. It wasn't even his choice, and you know it. Marinette knew Tiki was right, but it didn't change how she felt. It just isn't fair. She whined into her pillow, feeling childish but too tired and emotional to exercise self-control. Tiki stroked Marinette's hair with her tiny wing-like hands. It's okay to cry, but don't start getting weird ideas about Kagami again. Suddenly, the air was filled with the sound of rapid-fire notifications coming in on Marinette's phone. Marinette went silent, daring to hope this was the response she'd been waiting all day for. Tiki fetched the phone and dropped it in front of Marinette, who sat up to check. Six unread messages from Adrian. Wow, Marinette, you have Lyme. Sorry, I didn't see your message until now. I don't really check Lyme. Thank you. Sorry to text you so late. Are you awake? Probably not. I hope not. Marinette's fingers shook a little as she typed a reply. Hi, I'm awake. What are you doing up? Just couldn't sleep. You should go to sleep. But since you're awake right now, I want to show you something. Can I FaceTime you? Marinette panicked a little. She was in pajamas and her face probably looked like a mess from crying. But yes, she did want him to call. She typed a quick response just so Adrian wouldn't think she'd fallen asleep. Hold on. Flipping onto her belly, Marinette wiped her eyes on a corner of her comforter, pressed her cheeks, and forced her face into a big smile to get her happy muscles working. She turned the Lime camera on selfie mode to check how she looked. It was so dark that her face looked ghoulish, illuminated only by her phone screen. She flipped on the ambient glow light by her bed and swiped through the camera filters until she found one that made her look decent to cute. Ready? The shoot's about to start, so I have to go soon. Sorry, you must be tired. Never mind, you should just go to sleep. Okay, call me. Immediately, Adrian's Lime profile picture filled up the screen as the phone began to buzz with an incoming video call. Finally able to see the details of the picture, Marinette only had a moment to appreciate how charming he looked in a black dress shirt with the sleeves loosely folded at the elbow, and the way the light accentuated the perfect lines of his face before remembering that she was supposed to pick up. She touched the accept button and was greeted by Adrian wearing a yukata and a guilty smile. He was outdoors, but the background exposure was so bright Marinette couldn't make out any details. I'm so sorry for keeping you up, Marinette, Adrian said in a rush as soon as the call started. I just thought about you right away when we got to the location for the photo shoot. I noticed you use cherry blossoms in your designs a lot, and this place is so beautiful. I guess I could have just taken a picture. He laughed as if he were nervous. I was awake anyway, Marinette reassured him, checking the thumbnail of her own face to see if her smile looked genuine enough. Adrian squinted and moved the camera closer to his face. Are you okay? Were you crying? Oh no, how could he tell? No, I'm fine, Marinette said quickly. But in case her lie was obvious, she added, Okay, maybe I cried a little. I was watching a sad Korean film, so... Really? You like Korean films? Adrian gave a short laugh, and Marinette inwardly breathed a sigh of relief that he didn't seem to question her white lie. I love them. Maybe we can watch one together sometime. Wait, was he blushing? He'd invited her to watch a movie together? Th that sounds fun, Marinette agreed, slightly stunned. So, um, what did you want to show me? Marinette caught the tail end of his smile widening as the camera swung away from his face to focus on the surrounding scenery. As the exposure adjusted, Marinette could see cherry blossom trees lined up as far as the eye could see, luscious cotton candy pink. Petals were falling like snow and even the grass was coated in petals, making the entire scene look like a pink paradise from another world. Isn't it beautiful? Adrian's voice asked, warm and full of wonder. They only bloom for about a week. Yeah. Wow. Marinette replied, speechless. She watched the petals falling for a few more seconds, entranced, before regaining her mouth function enough to say, Thank you for showing me this. It really is beautiful. Adrian's grinning face was back on the screen. I knew you'd like it. Sorry, Marinette, but they're calling me. See you when I get back. Happy birthday, Marinette said quickly before he could hang up. Thanks. Adrian's expression was soft. Now go to sleep, okay? 
Good night, per- um, Marinette. He abruptly hung up. Marinette blinked once, twice, and remembered to breathe. That was sweet of him, Tiki chirped. Yeah. Marinette's heart felt like it was going to flutter out of her chest. She couldn't believe Adrian had seen such a beautiful scene and immediately thought about her. A few seconds later, three more notifications sounded. Adrian had sent her two photos and a text. Decided to take pictures anyway, so you can see it again anytime you want. Clutching her phone to her chest, Marinette curled up and buried her face in her pillow again. But this time, instead of crying, she was squealing. Quietly. You really need to get a hold of yourself, Marinette. Thank you for listening to Chapter 11 of Carousel of Life. Let me know your thoughts in the comments or leave a like to show your support. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss the next part. Until next time!